Hello, in this 10th and final video in my time value of money series, I'm going to show the calculation of the required rate of return. As a quick review, remember we said that the determinants of value include the expected cash flows from an investment, the period of investment, and finally the required rate of return. And sometimes, given value in the form of either present value and or future value, we're able to calculate expected cash flows, um, typically annuity payments or investment period and now I'm about to show the required rate of return. In this first problem you have two hundred thousand dollars to invest which you would like to see grow to become five hundred thousand dollars over a period of ten years and the question is what rate of return can you expect? Well again we can express the future value formula or the present value formula plug in the uh, values we have and then solve for R, which comes out to be 9.6%. Alternatively, better yet, you can use the fin your financial calculator, as I'm about to do right now. So let's clear the screen. Second, clear TVM. Second, clear work. So you put in the values as you have them. $200,000 with a negative is your PV. Half a million dollars is your future value. Ten is the investment period and all you got to do compute I and that's it 9.6 percent alright let's look at the second problem right here additionally you're thinking well you can um, invest four hundred dollars um, each year alright so this is an annuity each year in addition to two hundred thousand dollars you would like to invest four hundred thousand dollars to supplement each year over this ten year period and again you'd want all of that to grow to become half a million the question is what's your rate of return you can try and do it manually as you can see here but you see there are there's more than one instance of R and so that's gonna be somewhat tedious and unnecessary um, so we're gonna hook it up with uh, the financial calculator right there so clear the screen second clear TVM second clear work again you do this ritual so as to clean out the system of what you did previously so this is gonna be two hundred thousand dollars with a negative is PV half a million as your future value 400 that's your annuity payment and 10 that's your N and then you compute the required rate of return to be 9.73 percent alright so now this um, third regular problem here says suppose you can invest 2500 bucks and I put negative here to delineate the fact that this represents an investment and you expect this investment to yield these uh, different cash flows over the next four years and what's your rate of return so this is a typical structure of cash flows in investments uh, in capital investments decision making so this is the expression of this problem and it's one equation one unknown the unknown being R but again it's gonna be um, kinda tough trying to use trial and error to find this rate of return so it's better we run quickly to the financial calculator and because now um, from previous videos you learn that when you have different cash flows you're going to use the cash flow register right here on the second row of keys so first second clear TVM second clear work so click the CF and then hit second clear work to clean it out of whatever you did previously in this mode so for CF sub zero, let's move this aside so I can see the values. It's going to be 2,500 with a negative, all right, right there. And you enter it. Everything you do in this mode, you got to click enter. You scroll down to C1. Your C1 is 500, so 500. So you enter. You scroll down to C3, uh, to C2 actually. C2 being the cash flow occurring at the end of the second period, all right. And um, your cheat sheet, your guide is right there. So it's 700 enter scroll down to C3 C3 is 900 enter and finally C4 is 1000 enter and you can if you scroll down without making any further entries the system knows that you're done and will start reviewing your entries so you can review your entries to make sure all is uh, kosher and then once you're satisfied click on this IRR that's the internal rate of return and then it says click compute 
and uh, hit this compute key right here and that's what it is 8.2 percent all right so now in this final problem it shows the calculation of the effective annual rate so this is what I call the case of four banks and you're thinking which bank should I invest in all four of them are offering you the same annualized rate of return of 8.4 percent so this is your nominal annual return however bank A says will compound your money once a year bank B says will do so semi-annually bank C says will do so quarterly and finally bank D says will compound, compound your money monthly so there are 12 compounding periods here and as you can see with the same investments of a hundred bucks the future value of your investments in bank D that compounds your money monthly is going to be the highest and the reason is because you have the highest effective annual in, uh, rate of return the num the more the number of compounding periods per year the greater is going to be the future value of your investment and therefore the greater would be the effective annual rates which is defined in this manner where M is the number of compounding periods within the year so for bank A that compounds your money once a year your effective rate is going to be the same as your nominal annual rate of 8.4 percent for B it's a little bit higher 8.558 percent for C even higher the highest is D with a rate of return of 8.73 percent so so quickly go to Excel to look at the Excel function for the computation of rates. Here's the first problem right here, the input. And to calculate your rate of return, it's equal rate, open parenthesis. It prompts you for the number of periods, which is this guy right here, 10 years, comma, for uh, payment, uh, which is the next argument. We don't have payment, so type zero. And then the next stop here is present value with a negative, you reference it, comma, finally is future value and then you reference it and you close parenthesis and that's your rate of return of 9.6 percent and then for this case where you do have an annuity payment additionally of 400 bucks now that means when you type rate open parenthesis reference the number of periods comma and now you're gonna have to reference your uh, the uh, payments because you have it comma and then uh, with a negative you reference uh, your PV comma and then your future value and then you close and that's what the rate of return is 9.73 percent and the last regular problem the internal rate of return which uses different cash flows with an investment of twenty five hundred dollars at the outset this is the cash flow structure and this is uh, the unique function that you're going to use to calculate this rate of return which is equal IRR you open parenthesis it asks you for the values the values are the cash flows beginning with the initial one alright which is this one right here highlight all of them quite simple ignore guess the computer is smart enough to figure it out so just go ahead and close parenthesis and voila and that's it